Hey guys, David Stewart here. I'd like to do a little bit of a book review for you today. It is called The Trillisk Ruins. It is by Michael McCloskey, uh, aka Madbot McCloskey, aka Squidlord. Uh, but before I dig into this science fiction book, which is uh, part of the Parker Interstellar Travel series, there's a long series of these books, um, I want to say a couple things about how this review fits into what I kind of want with the channel, um, which is to provide a lot of good consumer information for people. I really want to look more and more into uh, independent fiction, stuff that's a little bit outside uh, the standard gatekeepers, especially in the science fiction and fantasy genres. I feel the genres have become a little bit stale from uh, the bigger publishers like Tor and whatnot. Um, and I don't really quite know why that is, but uh, I've I've picked up a lot of books over the last couple years that I just haven't been willing to finish because I found them really boring. But at the same time, there's lots of great ideas out in the independent fiction world. Um, but without those gatekeepers, Obviously, there's going to be stuff that's not good that comes through as well. So we've got to be able to kind of build a little bit of a community of reviewers and uh, and friends here to talk about stuff that we like and don't like and to, and to figure out what's good and what's worth consuming and what's not worth consuming. And I think especially if you if you look outside of the literary genre as well, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the IPs that people really like over the last 50 years have been very, very corporatized and kind of crapped on um, like Star Trek and Star Wars. Um, so it's good to, if you're not happy with how those IPs are being developed, go find other ones that you'd like to consume that, that interest you. So this is one that we're going to look at. Um, I read this a while back, but I really wanted to do a, um, a little bit of a video on it. It's called Trillus Ruins. Like I said, it's part of a series called the Parker Interstellar Travels travel series aka the pit series it is free on amazon right now uh so there's no reason to not go out and buy it and take a chance on it um in general uh let me say as a as a precursor to this obviously we could see the um the uh the cover the cover is very appealing um the covers by howard lyon by the way if you you might recognize like his magic the gathering illustrations here's some of them um and this is actually a michael mccloskey cover as well here uh but I, I think uh, I, I think the illustrated um, I think the illustrated cover is very very appealing. It works in the sci-fi genre. A lot of covers now are just like the photo covers um, that you see. They're just like photoshopped into a cover, and that's very popular. And that kind of works for marketing right now. But it's good to see an illustrated cover. Um, so there's that. Uh, let me also dig into uh, bef as a little bit of a precursor before I talk about the book itself, uh, what I expect from science fiction, because this really colors my opinion on most science fiction. Science fiction is something that is very different for me from regular stories out in the real world. Like I've said, science fiction is usually set in the future. To me, science fiction is about ideas um, and it's about how those ideas affect humanity. And I, that's what I find interesting about science fiction, much more than uh, particular story devices in science fiction. Other people have different opinions. Some people are like, it's all about the story and the ideas are just, you know, kind of cursory things. But from when I hear that, I just think, well, why would you want to read science fiction? To me, science fiction is all about how those ideas affect characters and affect the world and, and are original and interesting. Uh, and fantasy is really about imagination. Science fiction is about like technology and and invented systems and space travel and, and how those things affect people to me. So with that in mind, I actually like this book. Um, I only read the first two or three books in the series because that was all that was out when I read these books. Um, but there's more out. There's like, I believe, seven in the series now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's a, a regular series of five, the Trillisk series, and then there's two Solarian books and I, I assume there'll be some more in the Solarian series as well. Um, what makes this book interesting to me is uh, not the story or the characters nearly as much as the ideas. Like I said, science fiction to me is about ideas. Um, and I think that's actually true for most people. I'll, I'll, I'll just sort of interject this. Um, if you go look at like classic science fiction, most of it is about the ideas that are in it, especially if you read anything by Philip Dick. Uh, Philip K. Dick's uh, stories, 
they're well written, but it's about the ideas that are in them. In 1984, it's about the ideas. Um, in something like Starship Troopers, which, I, which I've reviewed on this channel, um, it's about the ideas that are in it. Starship Troopers is a book that I consider actually not very well written as a book, but the ideas are so interesting in it that people really, really stick onto those ideas, and that's why they really end up liking the book is because the ideas are powerful. So the same thing in this. Um, the ideas here, let me talk about the powerful ideas. There's a couple of background ideas that make this story happen. Number one, you know, we have humans with space travel. Um, we have an idea of what um, Mr. McCloskey calls a link, which is basically, you know, think of like your iPhone on steroids. It goes right into your brain, lets you access the network. Um, so basically, you're connected biologically into the internet. And this is a really powerful idea. It's an idea that, um, that I use in my books. Um, if you read... Um, the deep time uh, work that I have, A Prophet of the God Seed, a big thing uh, in that universe is, is singularity, becoming single with your technology. And once in my book, once people become fully integrated with the network, the network really becomes the super organism. Uh, he doesn't take that approach with it, but he does talk about like the ethical considerations of when, you know, when do you link your child up to the internet, right? Like when do you put this link, have this link installed for them to be able to to communicate with the internet. And you can use that link to communicate telepathically, which is very cool as well. So there's an idea there, and that definitely affects the way humans interact with each other and what's possible. Um, another big idea that's in it is uh, the idea of the Trillisks, which are like this you know, forgotten civilization that people are, are trying to go after. Um, the aliens in this uh, series are very different from humans, which I really like. Um, you know, I, if you're a fan of Star Trek, most Star Trek, uh, all the all the aliens are just human. They're humans with makeup because that's what works on TV. That's what you can do quickly, cheaply, and easily if you're filming a TV show. It's a it's a product of the limitations of your medium. Whereas um, if you're writing a book, you know you can do anything. So the the um, the aliens in this are very unhumanoid. Um, the main characters meet this alien that communicates by moving its legs in different different sorts of patterns. It has like a billion legs and it moves them all. And that's how it communicates, right? Like the way that we vibrate our vocal cords to produce a variety of pitches and, and rhythms uh, and uh, different focuses and different frequencies that eventually get assembled into language. He, they, he does that with movement of his limbs and he doesn't understand, he can't communicate with these humans. He thinks they don't have any language. There's all these good sections of the book that are from the alien's perspective, which are just so interesting and fun for me. Um, and eventually the alien figures out how to communicate with people by figuring out that they're that they communicate by vibrating the atmosphere which is very profoundly odd to him but he figures out a way to communicate with them uh using you know like computer interfaces and vibrating he has like these little balls that float around him and he vibrates one like on a surface and that creates like a very strange sounding um set of language so it's it's really interesting to have an alien that's extremely non-humanoid and uh how people figure out how to communicate with that alien, how both those species eventually figure out how to work together and cooperate to overcome their obstacles. Uh, likewise, the the Trillisks, the Trillisks are actually a different alien from that one. That one's called, a, I don't remember what he's called. Uh, his name is Carizio, I think. But uh, um, the Trillisks are not, uh, they're, they're not really humanoids, but they have trilateral symmetry, which is an interesting idea. We have bilateral, meaning you divide it in half. We have two arms, two legs. They're like trilateral. And so when they, they try to interface with this alien, uh, like cybernetic thing, and uh, all of a sudden they're missing, they're aware that they're like missing part of their body because the Trillisks have fundamentally different biology, which, which, is, which is great. I really like that in science fiction. Um, there's nothing wrong with like having really humanoid aliens, but it's really refreshing to have something that's very not human. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. And of course, uh, Mr. McClossey comes up with lots of different cool ways for them to figure out how to work together, uh, that I think are very convincing to me. Um, let's talk a little bit about the characters. So that's the setting. Let's call that the setting. That's the setting part. I like to do setting characters plot. You guys know that. So that's the setting. The settings, this future sci-fi world, uh, the characters, there's, uh, two, there's three main characters. One of them is an alien. So one of them is Carizio. He's an alien. The other two are humans. Uh, you have the girl who is like a, a Xeno archeologist. She studies like dead alien cultures that they've dug up as humans. And I don't remember, I don't think in the first book humans have really contacted 
aliens for the most part. Uh, but Carizio, the alien that uh, these characters meet, he's uh, he's like a survivor of a war that his species had with some other alien species uh, that basically like obliterated them. Um, and then you have uh, a third character um, who's a male, and basically what happens is is uh, Talissa, who's the main character, hires I believe his name's actually I have it over here somewhere I think Marcus. Uh, she hires him and a group of people to take her to these ruins that she's found. And of course, once they get in the ruins, it turns out these uh, ruins are able to uh, manipulate matter to be whatever is sort of homely for them. And they figure out that it's like a, an alien zoo and that, that the computer was automatically generating rooms for them. Um, and uh, they come in contact with this bizarre alien, Carizio, and he ends up killing everyone but these two people, but the male and the female. And um, the uh, Talissa, the sort of main character, she uh, she kind of goes on this expedition because she's angry with her dad and she's not satisfied with life on Earth. She finds it boring. She wants excitement. Uh, that's sort of her drive. And Marcus is sort of like the mercenary for hire. Um, the characters in this in this book haven't you know they're they're not fully explored. They're not as deep. As, as probably you get in later books in the series as you as you sort of know them more. Uh, they don't need to be deep because like I said, the book to me is about the ideas. Uh, they have basic motivations. They do basic um, character things. Uh, they're not uh, these super exciting, super deep characters that some people really get into. Uh, they're not, they're, you know, their flaws are basic human flaws. Um, they're not Mary Sue's and they're not every man. They're just, they're, they're normal characters. Uh, they're normal people. Um, there is, uh, like I said, I, I really like Carizio, who's a third character. I really like things from his perspective because he views things very unhuman like. And I thought, um, I thought, I thought the writer did a really good job communicating that. Um, as far as the plot goes, the plot's basic. Like I said, they, uh, you know, uh, Talissa is not happy with Earth. She goes and explores this ruin to find these valuable artifacts. They get trapped in the ruin come in conflict with the alien then they learn to work together to try to overcome their uh their problem they're like they end up trapped and they have to work together to figure out how to not be trapped um there's a couple of beats in that plot that are off there's a part where like the characters um just kiss and there's not a lot of lead up to that and i didn't really buy it um but because the the, the narrative as a whole is rather compact it's a rather short book overall um, but it doesn't need to be long. Uh, short is short is fine if you get to the points and 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 let the let the story speak. The story works. Um, there's not a ton of room for character development, but you don't really need it. The style is fairly um, condensed, even though I would say it's it's a modern, realist, detail oriented um, writing style. It, nevertheless, it really moves along once it gets going. It really pumps out fast. It's a quick read, uh, not just because it's um, it's short, because it's not it's it's longer than plenty of other books. Uh, not not just because it's short, but because of the style that it's written in. It's written, you know, the language is really easy to understand. It's not written in like a super high grade level. It's not it's not something that is a difficult read. It's an easy read, um, and that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's good. You want your reader to be able to pick it up and blast through it and feel interesting. And, the whole way through and so overall i think this is a good book and um, i think the style works for it um quite well i i don't think the characters are super well developed but they don't really need to be because to me the story is about the idea and i find the setting to be the most interesting thing about this the story definitely uh the part that is worth uh investing in in this book and in the series and like i said it's it's free on amazon right now it's free on on kindle uh, which basically means that you can tr you can at least take a chance on it for free. I like the opening prologue. It's from the, the alien's perspective. I think it will suck you in. So give it a shot. It's called Trillis Gruens uh, by Michael McCloskey. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to check out. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I will see you, of course, later. And I really, really appreciate you um, coming along on this journey. And also, uh, don't forget, my book is out on Amazon. You can read it. You can find it down below. It's called Muramasa Blood Drinker. It takes place in Muramachi period, Japan. It's got lots of sword fighting, blood, and uh, 
other kinds of fun things. So hopefully you enjoy that if you're, if you're willing to take a chance on that. It's 99 cents on Amazon and I always appreciate it. Y'all have a great, great day.